In this video, I want to look at how objects can be sorted using the compare to method of the comparable interface. What I've done is I have imported the arrays class and the collections class, and I've created three students, Joe, Bob, and Sally. I've put the students into a student array. I then use the array toString string method to print them out unsorted, sort them with the arrays sort method, and then print them after they've been sorted. I do the exact same thing for an array list, but instead of using the arrays class, I use the collections.sort to sort them. So let's see what happens. We can see that they're definitely changed. This one right here, we have Joe, Bob, then Sally in the unsorted, but then we have Sally, Joe, and Bob. Same thing down here, Sally, Joe, and Bob. Well, where in the world are they deciding how and why to sort. If you watch the last video, we left the student class like this. It says that it's going to sort by GPA first, and then it's going to sort by grade level, and if those two are the same, they're going to be equivalent to one another, and they wouldn't change positions. So if we look at our output, this sheds a little bit of light on why they're being sorted this way. They're being sorted by GPA, 3.5, 3.7, 3.9. What we can learn from this is that when the arrays sort method is called, or when the collections sort method is called, it is going to the compare to method of the class and using it as its basis to decide how it's going to sort. To prove the point further, let's test it instead of GPAs, let's give them all the same GPA so they all all have a 3.0 GPA and let's see because what should happen next is it should sort by grade level and Bob is in the ninth grade Sally is in the 11th and Joe is in the 12th and we can see in both cases it does exactly that it sorts exactly the way that we would expect it to using the compare to method so we can see that the compare to method is a powerful tool that both the arrays and collections classes use in order to sort different data structures. And in the last program here, I want to talk about polymorphism and how it can be utilized with the comparable interface. Notice here that I have an array called mant or a mant array with the numbers 5, 7, 8, 3, and 2. And then also I have an array list here called mant2 and it also has the same numbers. When I compile and run this, it's going to sort my numbers. So I have the unsorted array here, and then it sorts itself. And then I have the unsorted array list, and then it too is sorted. But look what I can do. Because I know that the integer class realizes the comparable interface, instead of calling this a integer array, I can call it a comparable array. And I can also, instead of holding integers inside of this array list, I can hold comparable items. And we can see that it still sorts both of them the exact same way. Now notice the benefits of this. Let's say that I don't want to use an integer array. I want to I want to change it later into a double array or I want to change this later using doubles instead of integers. Well, if I put 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.6 and 0 0.0 Notice that it has zero problems switching from one to the other. So you can see that the array is taking on many forms by declaring the array by its interface as opposed to just one type of data. And you can do the exact same thing with array list. Let's say, what else inherits the comparable? Well, characters inherit it. So if I say A, I'm going to copy that and then just change the letter in a sec. C, F, D, and P. Let's see if this works. And it absolutely does. We see that the array list changes from A, C, F, D, P to A, C, D, F, P. So we can see the benefits of polymorphism here and setting different data structures as holding comparable objects as opposed to holding just integers or just doubles or just characters. 
polymorphism allows us to take on many forms and we can change what an array is holding during runtime to fit the needs of the particular program.